It is the world's fastest growing faith. One of every four people on earth finds spiritual peace in the words of the Quran. Nearly 1400 years ago, the angel Gabriel came to Muhammad with revelations that he was to deliver to all of mankind. He spent the rest of his life communicating God's message and setting an example for how each human being should live. Today, many Americans associate Islam with images of violence and hatred. But such scenes are the work of a few suicidal fanatics. Their actions directly contradict the teachings of Muhammad and cloud the memory of a man who long ago brought a new message of hope and serenity. It is not possible to conclude that the Prophet is a man of hate. The Prophet of Islam is without doubt the most misunderstood major aspect of the Islamic religion. Who was this man who founded Islam and brought spiritual comfort to so many? Muhammad is often thought to be worshipped as Jesus uh, was is worshipped by Christians. Um, this is absolutely and categorically not the case. He was an ordinary human being with the same emotions, the same fears, the same insecurities that we live with. Today, Muhammad's words of tolerance and peace offer many the same guidance as they have for centuries. God's messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Out of respect for the beliefs and practices of Muslims, no image of the Prophet Muhammad or his immediate family will be shown in this biography. Five times each day, over a billion and a half people turn toward the ancient city of Mecca and offer their prayers to Allah. From New York to Indonesia, from Nigeria to the steppes of Central Asia, Muslims repeat the words first learned 1400 years ago from the lips of a humble merchant and gentle teacher named Muhammad. There was a time when he was very poor and he had only one blanket and he needed it but there was a cat sleeping on the blanket. So he tore that part out which was under the cat because he did not want to disturb the cat and he took the rest of the blanket and went away. The life of Muhammad ibn Abdullah began in 570 of the Common Era. He was born in Mecca, a thriving trading community in the land that is today Saudi Arabia. No one could have known that the life of this child would become the foundation of a religion that would one day change history. At the time of Muhammad's birth, Arabia was a harsh, barren land broken only by the occasional oasis. The Arabs who lived in this demanding world migrated from site to site, struggling to live off their flocks in the harsh desert. To survive in such a place, Arabs depended on the support of their tribe. The tribe protected them from harm, not only from the desert, but also from the endless raids and vendettas launched by other tribes. Social life in pre-Islamic Arabia was grim, uh, and Muhammad was born into a time of violence, turmoil and despair, not unlike our own. The basic structure of social organization was the tribe. But the desert nomads also depended on other Arabs who had gradually built small cities where they engaged in commerce. The most prosperous of these cities was Mecca, home to the young Muhammad. Muhammad was a member of a tribe called the Quraysh, who had left the nomadic life and become prosperous as caravan traders. Muhammad had been raised an orphan. By the time he was eight, he was under the care of an uncle who was head of one clan of the Quraysh tribe. As the primary tribe of Mecca, the Quraysh were also the keepers of the Arabs' holiest religious shrine, the Kaaba. Although a deity known as Allah was recognized, many other gods and goddesses were also worshipped at the ancient Kaaba. Arabs prayed to over 300 idols that stood in and around the sacred cube-shaped structure. It had a very important social and political consequence because uh, it was a holy place and all violence was forbidden in a 30-mile radius around the Kaaba. Trading had brought wealth to Mecca. 
But jealousy and constant feuds were breaking down the old tribal system. The rich were ignoring the poor. Some felt that the old Arab religion needed change. Jews and Christians had had their prophets of reform. Just as Moses and Jesus had provided inspiration and renewal, many in Mecca now longed for a new spiritual revitalization. Muhammad had become a caravan manager in his native city, leading trading trips as far away as the land that is today Syria. But he was also aware that the old values of charity and community were breaking down in Mecca. Muhammad was deeply respectful of the religion of his ancestors. He was a frequent visitor to the Kaaba and attempted to lead a life of fairness and respect for all. We don't have lots and lots of information about the prophet the Muhammad uh, before he was called to be a prophet but that information which the tradition has passed down indicates somebody who was on the one hand very good at what he did a caravan manager his nickname among among other things was Al-Amin the trustworthy person he was uh, very soon known as the righteous one because he was known for being a fair kind of man, a man who was concerned with social issues. As well as somebody who was uh, efficient, he was seen as somebody who had strong leadership qualities. He was good looking, uh, he had a piercing fate, eyes that seemed to go into people's souls, a smile, he sometimes looked sad, uh, but, and, and a very sort of um, distinctive way of walking. In the year 595, Muhammad was hired by a wealthy woman of Mecca named Khadija to organize and guide a caravan for her. He accepted and returned with a handsome prophet. The trip would begin a new life for Muhammad and Khadija. He was an international business executive whose boss was a woman and uh, he was obviously very eligible and she proposed to him directly. Khadija in many ways is an interesting uh, historical figure. Uh, she's a self-made woman who decided to propose to uh, Muhammad, who was uh, not a prophet at that time. He was, reports say, 15 years her junior. Um, they apparently had a very loving relationship. Muhammad and Khadija had five daughters. Muhammad was an adoring father and throughout his life displayed affection for all children. Although the clan headed by his uncle had little prestige among the Quraysh, Muhammad's reputation in Mecca continued to grow. He was known for his kindness to slaves, his charity to the poor, and his fairness in dealing with all. Each year during Ramadan, the ninth month of the lunar year, Muhammad sought out the mountains surrounding Mecca as a place where he could refresh himself in solitude and prayer. In the year 610, at the age of 40, the humble business manager and family man took himself on one of these retreats to a mountain cave. Day and night, Muhammad remained in the cave to fast and pray. One night, as flames danced on the darkened cave walls, Muhammad's life changed forever. Suddenly, an angel in the form of a man appeared and commanded him proclaim. Muhammad was terrified and confused and said he had nothing to proclaim. The angel clasped Muhammad in a suffocating embrace. Harder and harder he was squeezed until it seemed the last breath of life would be wrung from his body. Proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created, created man from a clot of blood. Proclaim, and thy Lord is most bountiful. Muhammad was terrified and ran from the cave. He was sure something awful was happening to him. But as he scrambled over the mountainside,